My name is Maya. And my name is Jillian. And today we are going to be talking about carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, also known as the Chon elements, and how their electron configurations contribute to the structure of organic molecules. To begin, we're going to look at the periodic table. Each of the elements has a specific symbol on the periodic table. And what is important about this for the electron configurations is the atomic number, which is the large number written across the top of the box. This number is equal to the number of protons in the nucleus of each of the atoms. And since all atoms on the periodic table are neutral, this is also equal to the number of electrons. From this number, we can distribute the electrons in an approximate diagram around the central atom. So in the first inner ring for carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, there can be up to two electrons. And the outermost ring for hydrogen can also have two electrons. In carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, there is, there is a subsequent, subsequential larger orbital that can hold up to eight electrons. And this is where the idea of the octet rule comes from. Each of these elements wants to get eight, uh, eight electrons in their outermost orbital. And to do that, we could bring it back to the Lewis structures, which we all saw in chemistry. These the Lewis structures picture the number of valence electrons, or the number of electrons in the outermost shell as they are surrounding the central atom. And in covalent bonding, the atoms, the atoms share electrons between them. And so to form covalent bonds, for example, in methane, carbon and hydrogen must share electrons. And this allows eight electrons to surround the central carbon atom, leading us to the structure of methane. And we can also calculate the number of covalent bonds that each, each of these elements can form. And so for carbon, it's eight. We take eight because that is where the octet rule comes from and the number of electrons that it wants to receive from other elements. Eight minus four, which is the number of valence electrons surrounding the carbon, to give us four covalent bonds, possible covalent bonds formed by carbon. This, also, this rule also works for oxygen and nitrogen. 8 minus 6 is, equals 2, and nitrogen, 8 minus 5, equals 3. Also, well, for hydrogen, it's slightly different because it only has one orbital, and so we can take 2 minus the one valence electron to give us one covalent bond formed by hydrogen. So because carbon can form the most covalent bonds of the four elements here, it also forms complex three-dimensional structures, as depicted on this side. So when carbon is bonded to four other atoms, they will typically arrange themselves around the central carbon atom as a tetrahedral structure so that, so that the electron pairs in each chemical bond repel themselves about the atom to a stable configuration. And it's also depicted here, whereby the dashed lines represent the atom pointing outwards and the triangle represents the atom pointing inwards. And so three common struct three-dimensional structures that carbon forms when bonded to other atoms include chains, branch trees, and rings. An example of the chain structure is in fatty acid molecules. An example of the branch trees is observed in alkane molecules. And the rings can be observed in sugar molecules. And these are the corresponding abbreviations of each of each one of these, and the dashed lines represent uh, bonds that the carbon atom has to other atoms in these structures. Thank you.